This video is sponsored by Verb Energy. Stay tuned to find out how you can battle that inevitable afternoon crash with this tasty low calorie snack. <laughs> by now, I'm assuming everyone watching this knows what happened to Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, whatever it was going to be called. And if for some reason you don't, this is awkward. This is admittedly a bit of a tangent, but amidst this otherwise depressing story, I love the fact that everyone has been using the word killed when writing about this. Canceled? No. Pulled the plug? Nope. Gave up? Nah. Killed. As if EA literally murdered someone. <laughs> I just kind of find that hilarious. But Anthem is a dead game now officially. I feel like there's been a very strange sequence of events occurring over the last few weeks. In February, I made a video revisiting Anthem, talking about the current state of the game, and it was almost like EA themselves watched that video and through that remembered Anthem existed, because immediately after I made that video, EA came out saying that they were going to take a look at Anthem 2.0 and decide what to do with the project. As everyone knows by now, EA decided to terminate Anthem 2.0. And while the servers for the game will remain online, we won't be seeing any future Anthem content or updates moving forward. The Anthem overhaul Bioware has been working on for over a year will never get to see the light of day. Now, considering many of the things I discussed in the last Anthem video, the guys who were in charge of the project leaving Bioware, the fact that they only had 30 developers working on Anthem, it's not surprising EA decided to take those assets and move them elsewhere. But was this the right decision? Did this have to happen? While Anthem will forever go down in history as a cautionary tale of overhyped but impressively marketed games, I'd actually argue, no, this didn't have to happen. And now I'm gonna talk about why. If you end up enjoying this video, you can help support the channel by leaving me a positive rating. And for more content like this, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, all those classic YouTube things, so you don't miss anything. Now I'm not going to come out here on YouTube all angry with the pitchforks and the torches pissed at the fact that Anthem is no more. Anthem needed a huge overhaul, which would take a lot of money, manpower, leadership, and time. All things the project didn't actually have anymore. Despite this, Anthem seemed to still have a pretty large remaining player base. I know there are some people out there that still play the game. On top of that, there are people who continue to at least follow and support Anthem 2.0 on social media. In the comments of my video, which was the vast majority of people I'm assuming, there were a ton of people out there that said they're open to giving Anthem another try. The video got almost 900,000 views, and I know not all of those people would play an updated Anthem, but it at least shows there's still an interest in the game. More than likely, EA knows this. Hopefully, they also had more concrete data concerning their player base than we do. Understandably, potential players are not all going to be consistent players, which is the players that I'm assuming EA cares about. So if they were to invest in the future of Anthem, they need to be sure that the update would not only pique the interest of players, but also be good and substantial enough to keep them around. With no director and only 30 people working on such a massive game, I'm assuming whatever Bioware got done over the past year wasn't enough to retain players for a significant period of time. The initial buzz around Anthem would have brought in a lot of people, probably mainly due to curiosity, but keeping those players around might have still felt like an insurmountable feat. Despite the both unsurprising and unfortunate news, I don't think Anthem died last week. I think it died much longer ago. Having a bad launch is one thing many games release in an underwhelming state these days, to say the least, but failing the second time around the sun is another. This next part might confuse some of you, but just stay with me. You're about to get a little Timbo theology lesson. It's goofy, but I promise it will make sense. So in church, okay, my pastor talked about Peter and Judas. If you're unfamiliar, Peter and Judas were two of Jesus's 12 disciples. They were his buddies for three years. Before Jesus gets killed, both Peter and Judas betrayed him in some way. You probably don't have to be a Christian to know this, but Judas handed Jesus over to the Roman guards in exchange for 30 pieces of silver, which fun fact was the price of a slave back then. So yes, this dude got mad ripped off. Likewise, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, not as bad as getting him killed, but was still pretty bogus. Plus, by heavenly standards, all sin is equal, but 
I digress. Regardless, the legacies Peter and Judas left behind have less to do with their failures and more to do with how they responded to that failure. When Judas realized what he did, he was overstruck with guilt and hanged himself. Peter picked himself up, asked Jesus for forgiveness, and went on to do great things. As much as you guys think I crap on games like Destiny, it didn't give up after it failed. I've made several videos on the Taken King and just how crucial that was for Destiny's success, so I won't be going over that in detail again. If you want to see that video though, you can watch it by clicking on the card that will be showing up in the top right corner of your screen. Not only was the Taken King a good expansion with plenty to do, but it also came at a good time. Granted, Bungie probably had more people working on the game at the time than Anthem did, but Anthem didn't receive a substantial content drop like that in two years. Around that one year mark, the same time frame Destiny would have released The Taken King or Forsaken, Anthem added a Cataclysm event, which wasn't bad, it just paled in comparison to what other games did in that same amount of time. Anthem's poor release was one thing, but not fixing the issues after that first year is what I truly believe killed this game. Not to discredit the work the Bioware developers put into the game, but it seems like no one cared enough, which is additionally upsetting because despite its flaws, Anthem had a lot of potential and it had a lot of things going for it. Bioware just wasn't able to get things back on track by February 2020, which is what I feel like the deadline would have been to really turn things around. Contrary to what this video is titled, I don't think it was a bad decision to cancel Anthem 2.0 at this point. I think EA and Bioware gave up on this game long ago. Something they arguably shouldn't have done, or at least definitely didn't have to do, but it's just now being made official. The whole Anthem situation though, it just makes me sad. But you know what won't make you sad? Verb energy bars, okay? Come on, look at that segue. Verb energy bars, not to be confused with nouns and pronouns and adjectives and grammar and stuff. Verb energy bars are only 90 calories, come in a freaking bajillion delicious flavors, and contain the same amount of caffeine as a cup of espresso. It's the perfect little portable snack that can serve as a midday pick-me-up, a morning Kickstarter, or really anything else you want. Through our custom link provided in the description, you can get Verb's 16 bar starter pack for only $12. That is 52% off the regular price. You heard me right. Verb didn't stop at 50% like all these other people. No, they were like, give them that extra 2%. And let me just say, unbeknownst to you, Timbo is a bit of a health freak. Yes, I lift bro. My sister's actually a nutritionist and Verb bars are miles healthier than a lot of other similar energy products you can get. You heard it here first from unofficial Dr. Timbo, I'm prescribing you some Verb bars. The founder went to Yale you know there's some freaking science that went into this. So go ahead, click that link, and support the channel by trying out some delicious energy bars at a whopping 52% off.